So today let's review 2002B and problem number one on the AP Stats uh, free response questions. Go ahead and read it if you haven't read the problem already, but they're, ask you, they're asking you to construct a scatter plot from this data here. So let's get started with that. As you go to construct a scatter plot, remember scatter plots include two variables. You have an explanatory variable that's on the bottom here, and you have a response variable, which is on the y-axis. Uh, we have three rows of numbers here, so you need to decide like how to best set up the scatter plot. And my advice is always to kind of look for if there is one uh, variable that you believe causes a change in the other, or another way to say it is, does one variable depend on the other variable? Does it respond to it in some way? And intuitively, that's how we want to set it up if that's how we're approaching this problem. And in this problem here, I would assume that we are looking at the atmospheric ammonia based off of what the swine population is, right? We're not looking at what the swine population is based off of the atmospheric ammonia. That's probably going backwards, probably. But the good news about this is when you look at the solution guide, when you construct your scatter plot, they give you three different options. Uh, I would not do the last one where you have two scatter plots on one. That is to me, not the point of this question, I would pick one of the first two. And as I said, this would be the one that's probably most popular. Based off of the swine population, this is what the uh, atmospheric ammonia is. All right, now things you want to be aware of, your scale can be different, but it must be consistent. And you want to use the entire uh, graph that they give you, the entire axis. So as I go to construct my scatter plot, I'm doing it by hand, right? So this is the x-axis, the explanatory variable. That would be this one here. I look across and I see, oh, I need to go up to about 2, right? About 2. 2 is the maximum. Actually, 1.85 is the maximum. But if I go up to about 2, so I would go over here and I would make a 2. And then halfway in the middle, I would make a 1. And then I'd start, you know, dividing that out by the scale. Make sure you label the axes. Same thing with the response variable. That would be atmospheric ammonia. So I need to go up to 0.4, right? If I round it up. So up here somewhere, I would put a 0.4. And then halfway, you know, use your best eye here. About halfway, you can put 0.2 and then add 0.3 and you can add 0.1. And then you can start constructing your scatter plot. Let's look at really quickly what you need to do to get full credit on your scatter plot. So this is the scoring guidelines for part A. It's essentially correct if a scatter plot is given that includes the axis labels and the scales. So if you don't include those, you don't get full credit. And those are easy things to include, so don't forget those. It's partially correct. It means you'll get partial credit if it gives only one of those two things. So make sure that you are labeling both your axes and your scale, which are these numbers here and here. All right, then off to each part. So part B says the value for the correlation coefficient is 0.85. Interpret this value. So interpret 0.85 without even looking at this problem. What does 0.85 even mean? That's what this question is asking. So again, according to the solution guide, 0.85 means there's a strong positive linear relationship between swine population size and atmospheric ammonia. Now, my students just completed this problem. Barely any of them, it's probably my fault, but barely any uh, put it in context. So you need to have it in context. There's a strong positive linear relationship between whatever the X variable is and whatever the Y variable is. Let's look at the solution guide to see how we get points for this. Part B is considered essentially correct if the interpretation of the correlation coefficient includes both the words strong and positive, and it's interpreted in context. So really to get this one correct, what you need, the word strong, positive. Okay, the linear part we're gonna address in the next question, so uh, it's not necessarily in this one so much all right and then you also need to include don't say between the x and y variables say between swine population and atmospheric ammonia part c based on the scatter plot all right so here's where we get in trouble based on the scatter plot in part a so you have to comment on the scatter plot and you have to comment on the value of the correlation coefficient does it appear that the amount of atmospheric ammonia is linearly related so they're asking you to look at the scatter plot and look at that value and determine if this is a linear model or not, right? So when you write your solution to this, talk about this, talk about this, because it says based off of those two things, if you don't talk about one of those, you don't get full credit. 
here's what the solution guide says for that question. Both the value of the correlation coefficient and the pattern in the scatter plot indicate that there's a positive linear relationship between the size of swine population atmospheric ammonia. And going back to the scoring guide, what do you have to do to get it essentially correct if you if the comments are correct and based on both the value of the correlation coefficient and the scatter plot. So there's some freedom there for you, but you do have to talk about both. Okay, you could could you talk about a residual plot? Yeah, you could, but that's not what the question asks. It says based on the scatter plot and the correlation coefficient. So the last part of this question, what percent of variability in atmospheric ammonia can be explained by swan population swine population size? So I've tried to train my students. If you have some percent of variation or variability or change in the Y variable, and then they use the words that can be explained by, and then the X variable follows, this is clearly a situation where they want you to talk about R squared. So you take 0.85 and you square it, and that's going to give you 0.72. So the question asks what percent? So you can say 0.72, you can say 72%, or just 72. I would say 72% is the best answer. And notice that if you just write R squared, that is not sufficient. If you just write the term R squared, you have to say 72%. And I would go a step further and then write it in context. 72% of the variability in atmospheric ammonia can be explained by swine population size. All you have to do is copy that down. And you're good to go. That is 2002B number one. Good luck on your AP stats test.